Hello and welcome to another episode of the Odd Fellows Oddcast. And joining us today is Eddie LaBeouf. And Eddie is the past grand of the Crescent City Lodge in New Orleans, uh, number 73. And uh, today we're going to be discussing uh, coins as fundraisers. And Eddie's Lodge has gone through the steps of creating a very nice commemorative coin, which we'll be uh, discussing with a very specific purpose in mind, a cause that's very near and dear to my heart. And uh, he'll be talking about that. And uh, so Eddie, tell us, how did this idea get started in your lodge for fundraising and what was it for? Well, the idea started with, you know, we were instituted February 2nd this past year and um, we're a new lodge, a fledging lodge with no money, you know, and we thought of different ideas for fundraisers and in, in my mind that to, to commemorate the return of Odd Fellowship to New Orleans uh, after 40 years of not having uh, Odd Fellowship in New Orleans, um, a coin would be suitable for it. So it's kind of my idea and that I pitched around and the uh, members uh, went along with it. Okay, now, whenever you have an idea or something along these lines that the lodge does as a uh, as a lodge, uh, it goes through what people who are very familiar with the Roberts rules and, and that, you know, whether it's, you know, Rosenberg's rules or Roberts rules. Uh, a lot of city councils use these rules, a lot of, you know, corporations, whenever they have their, their meetings, you know, someone makes a motion, another person seconds it and it gets debated. So for anybody in Oddfellows, we know all about this. Uh, but mm -hmm. for somebody who is outside of Oddfellows, you may not know how these things that we do as a lodge actually occur. So um, I would imagine there was a lot of debate about it. Uh, were there any pluses or minuses that you can recall anybody talking about doing a coin well, uh, fundraiser? Well, there, there were some that were, um, there was some that thought it was too soon. And there were some that thought maybe um, it wouldn't work or it wouldn't um, catch on. But uh, in the end, we went forward with it anyway. Um, my main thought was you have to strike while the iron's hot. And it's not the same to have a commemorative coin for your third year or fourth year as it is for your first year. So it was imperative to me to have these coins minted in the year 2020, which is our the year we were chartered, 2020. Yeah. Now, the the particular reason for fundraising, was that exclusively for your lodge or uh, it was also in part for um, historical purposes as well? Yes. Yes. Um, so it was also... Um, the, uh, the back side of the coin uh, commemorates Oddfellows Rest Cemetery, which is we had already voted on as a lodge that we would um, take on Oddfellows Rest Cemetery as a pet project and keep it going. It is, unlike some Oddfellows Rest Cemeteries in some cities, it, it does belong to the Grand Lodge of Oddfellows in Louisiana. It does not belong to this new lodge, but it is local to us. So we have decided as a lodge that we would take it on as a project and we're gonna do uh, work days out there. We're gonna um, actually get our hands dirty, but we also wanted to raise money for it because the Grand Lodge can only put so much money into it. So we decided on 25% um, of the sales would, of the coins would go to um, the Oddfellows Rest Cemetery. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about why, how I came up with 25%. Sure. Uh, the fact was we, at first I was thinking 50%, but my fear was being a new lodge, we might get shorted on money and not have money that we need for per capita or for, uh, so my thought was once money goes in the Oddfellows Rest Cemetery account, it's not coming out. So if we put 25% in, we can always put more in later, which we will. Um, the lodge will vote from time to time to move money from the lodge account to Oddfellows Rest, but it will not go the other way. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we, we wanted to be a little conservative with that percentage, but it's still going to raise a good bit of money for the Oddfellows Rest Cemetery. Right. Now, I know that there are some laws around, you know, fundraising that basically say that if you're raising funds for your lodge, 
that since that's not something that benefits the public at large, that's not something that you can write off. But if it's for, let's say, a scholarship, I mean, our lodge, we have a scholarship and it benefits the mm -hmm. public because the public is invited if you're a high school senior to apply for the scholarship. So any money that we take in that is earmarked uh, for the purpose of, uh, um, you know, something that benefits the public, uh, you know, that is something that can be treated as a nonprofit and you can actually write off those kinds of donations. So, uh, and I take it that since the Oddfellows Rest Cemetery is a bit of a gem in the Crescent City, uh, that it's something that benefits the public. Are you treating it uh, that way as a nonprofit sort of fundraiser? Well, it, we're, we're, we're just got our paperwork back um, to incorporate with, this, with, the, um, with the state and I, we, I don't believe we got our 501c status yet. Um, so I'm not sure, and I would, even if I was, even if we did have the status, I would still tell you to talk to your tax professional. <laughs> right. Um, I, because I think when you do that, we would have to issue some sort of receipt saying that it went there. So I don't know if we're prepared to be able to do that just yet. Yeah. We're really still that new. We don't sure. even have a checking account yet. Sure. Yeah. And uh, in my experience, you know, it's it's really OK to to do that. And if somebody asks for a receipt, then you can always, you know, issue them one. Yes, we uh, can. I know that people who donate, um, you know, let's say they have something of value that, mm -hmm. you know, you could auction as a lodge, as a fundraiser. Uh, it's common practice to uh, give that person a letter saying thank you for your donation of so yes. and so and we expect it to be you know worth this much and then that way they can write off that with their tax professional. We can definitely do that I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Now uh, as far as uh, the Oddfellows Rest uh, Cemetery goes do you want to talk a little bit about that because you know I have been you know so in love with uh, the images that I've seen of uh, Oddfellows Rest and um, uh, as a matter of fact, for my podcast and, and my website that this, this uh, uh, my, my nonprofit rests on, I use the uh, one image that uh, a very uh, lovely lady let me use it for uh, the background. And so yeah. the beginning and end of this video, you see the Odd Fellows Rest uh, uh, view of a particular uh, crypt of Odd Fellows. Yes, what, what you have is um, a plaque that is on the, what's called the Southwestern Tomb. It's the Southwestern Lodge Tomb. Uh, it originally was the Tetonia Lodge Tomb, but then Southwestern took it over and renamed it, basically. <laughs> um, so the, the cemetery was founded about 1849, and that's on the coin. It mentions 1849. It says to bury the dead. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with Hodfield's Rest Cemetery right now is it's basically basically a construction site, hmm. especially the southwestern tomb you're talking about. Um, there's literally boards propped up holding the walls from falling down. So we can't really at this point have people walking around to where they could possibly have a marble wall fall on them. Hmm. Um, I know on some cemetery groups I'm on in Facebook, every now and then somebody starts complaining, we can't get in or and there's still this myth about if you bring a bouquet of flowers to the herb import company next door that they'll let you in. Hmm. I believe at one time they were doing that. I guarantee you it's not going to work not. now. Right. Uh, they, they know not to let nobody in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but um, there is a way to visit the cemetery if you contact us and then we can get you in touch with the caretaker. Mm -hmm. who's now our noble grand, Michael Duplantier. He tries to accommodate members of the order um, to get them in if, you, um, if you're in the area. Oh, that's fantastic. But it's a beautiful cemetery. And we're right. trying to save it. Now, do you have a website for your lodge? Uh, or We have a Facebook page, and we, we would like to get a, um, a website later. And mm -hmm. um, I'm learning now more about how Facebook pages work um when i was getting crickets on not just that page but my scottish right page i started realizing when i looked it up you have to get people to there's a, a notification to click on where they have to turn on notifications or they don't really see them mm -hmm. and um i'm i'm hoping to get the word out on that and i'll let you should let your listeners know for any of these pages that you really want to get updates on make sure you have your notifications turned on it's something i'm learning as uh -huh. i go along yeah, I, I know the, the way that Facebook works is you have to uh, choose to follow a page uh, yeah. and not just like it. You know, usually when yeah, you yeah. like it, 
you automatically are included in following it, but sometimes that can change, you know? So and I thought that too, that just liking it would do it, but it, it doesn't. It's not right? enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. Well then I'll, we'll be happy to put some links directly to the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if there's ever a, ch a time in the future, whenever you guys have a website, I'll be happy to add that to the okay. bottom of the, uh, uh, YouTube video and uh, put it into the description of, uh, our, uh, podcast as well and so um the other thing i, don't I, think I ran into your question though joe yeah. um joseph uh so um about the roberts rules of order so there was some people that weren't really totally on board but in the end uh a member myself uh put up the money for it so the lodge had no out-of-pocket expense That's good. so with that basically the motion was does the lodge approve using its name on a coin and i don't know if we had the right to put hospitals or a cemetery on it but we did anyway um and actually i did talk to the grand lodge and and let them know what i was doing so there was no objections there so basically the motion was no one was against using our name on a coin and everybody approved the design because obviously what if the lodge doesn't like the design they can say right. well we're okay with the coin but we don't like the way you did the design right so they did approve the design but had I was at, had I been asking the lodge to put up the money, I think our discussion would have went longer. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of, you know, bypassed a larger discussion. I think fewer objections because it, the the lodge didn't the money, have to fund yes. it, right? Okay, and let's talk about that design. Um, I uh, remember originally whenever you posted your idea about the design. And uh, because I've got a little bit of, you know, graphic design background, I was like, oh, I, I could help you with that. And I, oh. I ended up getting a little too busy uh, to, to knock that out because I've done some logos for lodges, including my own. And um, uh, so I really love your idea for uh, the design of the, the obverse side, which would be for your lodge, as opposed to the reverse side, which is for uh, the Oddfellows Rest. So tell us about the design for the lodge itself. Well, the design is one, um, there's a lot of iconic New Orleans designs, um, the things that people associate with New Orleans. One is, and I don't know for those of you outside the state how much y'all have seen it, but our water meter covers in New Orleans are pretty famous. Uh, they have a moon and they have rays with stars on it because it's, we're Crescent City. The river makes like a crescent, so we're called the Crescent City. And um, somebody at some point made this weird looking water meter cover that um, I've seen uh, it on jewelry. I've seen it um, sold prints of, um, people, artists have done paintings of. So we took inspiration from that and came up with our own lodge design based on that water meter cover. Um, right. And that's kind of where we started with it. Now I, I'm gonna put up the image for that design mm -hmm. right now. Yes. And uh, so this is, this is an image of that uh, is it like a manhole cover? Well, it's it's a, wa a water meter covers. How about, big is it? Uh, um, Two well, the, or? well, the original water meter a water meter covers. It's a large round one. I, I would say about six inches in diameter. Okay, Obviously, gotcha. the coins uh, smaller. <laughs> right. um, but as everybody could see on the coin, we yeah, let's added put that, in the rays. We're gonna of put this, that up. This is the coin. Yes. And uh, what they can see right now is from the rays, we also added the words friendship, love, and truth, which is obviously not in a New Orleans water meter. Right, right, right. And um, one thing um, some people might notice that they might think we did wrong is that the crescent, obviously the crescent part of the moon is the bright side. And on our design, we have the three chain links connecting the top and bottom of, of the crescent moon. But the rays are coming from the chain links and not from what would be the bright side. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually did that on purpose because um, to me, the friendship, love, and truth shines from the Odd Fellows organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was actually something we, it was a conscious decision, not mm -hmm. something we did on accident or something. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, uh, that's what we did. Now, do you want to talk about how it is that you? Uh, sourced the coins themselves. Uh, so um, go ahead and, and tell us about that. Is it okay to talk about the companies? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so be happy to uh, basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to create 
uh, a limited edition coin and another type of coin. So we, we, the better, we paid more for the gold finish and we came out with 73 of those um, gold finish coins, um, very limited. And we have them encased in the coin capsule and they come with a velvet bag and they're almost sold out now. Um, and we have the silver coins that are cheaper. And um, basically we were dealing with one company, I think it was called Custom Challenge Coins, which they were all right. But I was also talking to all about challenge coins at the same time. And the first thing I'd ask them while waiting for my graphic artist to um, uh, make a recommendation, I asked them for the mold fee. It's if you buy 300 coins, most of these challenge coin companies will waive the mold fee, which is usually approximately $75. Yeah. But that's a couple coins right there that you can have extra if you can get away from the mold fee. Mm -hmm. So I knew from the beginning I wanted at least 300 coins. So the first question I asked all about challenge coins is, can I mix and match the silver and gold to achieve the 300 level? Mm -hmm. to waive the fee. And Fair without question. missing a beat, all about challenge coins quickly said yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they emailed me within 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was like, okay, that's good. Now, in the end, we decided, you know what, we'll go 73 gold and go to even 300. But at first, I was going to do two something silver and, you know, the balance of 73. But I decided, you know what, let's just go 300 and make an even number of silver coins. The problem with custom challenge coins, and I, I think they're a good company, and I know people that have used them in my other organizations. Um, when my graphic artist started sending in the bid, they, they, they kept sending the quote back. It was kind of butchered. Mm. They wanted to treat it separately. So they, they waived the mold fee on the silver, but not only were they charging a mold fee on the gold, but they were also giving me a higher they were putting me in the higher price tier. There's price tiers mm. uh, for if you want 100, 200, yeah. 300. Fewer coins. So, so this cost, made yeah. the total quote like really go off the rails. Oh. And I had to write to them back. And I said, look, you know, I hate to say it. I mean, you know, the other company said they'll give me the price tier and the mold fee and not treat it separately. So they agreed to it. But when they sent the quote back, they butchered something else on the quote that they had right the first time. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I told, you know, the, the, the graphic artist uh, lady, uh, Megan Nolan, who did a really good job for us. I'm sure I didn't know you could have helped us with it, but I'll talk more about that later. Right. Okay. Um, I told her, let's go with the other company. So we quit mess. We went with all about challenge coins and they gave us the price tier. So I would like your listeners to know if they do the coin, make sure that if they're getting two different finishes, they get that price tier throughout um, the, despite the how many coins. Yeah. Right. And that the mold fee be raised. Now, right. obviously, if you change your design from one finish to the other, if it's a different mold, it's a different mold. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you would have to pay a different mold fee then. Sure. Understood. Now, that's a really great thing that you brought up how you discussed, you know, the two different uh, with the two different companies, because, you know, uh, for someone who is trying to do this, they don't necessarily know what questions to ask, you know, they don't know yeah. what to, what to uh, look for. So that's a very valuable lesson. Uh, so, you know, thanks for, you know, sharing that. Now, how did you uh, price the coins? Uh, to sell? Yeah. I mean, you have well, a, a fundraising yeah. goal and yes. you also, you know, uh, set prices for the coins. Yeah. So we, we thought about it. I tried looking at other um, other lodges selling their coins. And um, I, I saw a lot of lodges were at the $10, $12. Now, some of them you'll see are as cheap as five. Mm -hmm. Now, those usually, though, they're selling generic coins that don't have their name on it. They weren't custom made. Um, I, can, I saw one, in fact, yesterday that um, it's like a military one that honors all the four branches of military, it's a Masonic one, and then the other side has a square and compass, but it doesn't say that lodge's name, it, it's not unique at all, it's basically one they purchased in bulk. Like a re um, reusing someone else's mold, probably, yeah? Yeah, yeah, so... Um, Basically, I came up, I started with the, the, the silver, I wanted to price that out, and I really thought, well, let's go for 15, and um, 
because we really wanted to start off good in, I wanted these to be collectible because there's another feature on these coins we paid extra for. We have the year 2020 stamped on the side mm -hmm. and that's on the gold and the silver. And the reason for this is if we decide to reissue the coin, say in five years, uh, that one would be stamped 2025. I want people to know that this is our first issue. Mm -hmm. And I send a little informational um, paper out with each uh, coin, letting you know that this is the first time these coins were issued. Um, so from there, we came up with, for the gold coins, um, we upped it a little bit. I added the um, coin capsules, the plastic coin capsules and the um, uh, uh, velvet bags for them. And I came up with the price 25, um, $10 more than the silver. Now, the other thing I had to pay extra for this one is we had them sequentially numbered. So they're numbered one to 73. Mm. Now this does not count as a mold change. This is a extra that you can pay for. So apparently their machine can add sequential numbering without changing the mold itself, which mm -hmm. was important. Um, they put it on the crescent moon of the gold coins. And basically it's, it's very exclusive. Um, like I said, they're selling fast and um, I'm actually visiting our newest lodge in Louisiana, Themis Lodge, uh, Themis number 75 this Friday. Uh, past sovereign grandmaster and current grandmaster Jimmy Humphrey will be in attendance uh, with Joyce Humphreys, his, his wife. And um, I'm planning on trying to, I'm giving them first crack at whatever gold coins I have left. And after that, I'm, I'm going to open it up to the internet. Um, but uh, that's how we kind of came up with the prices. It's, it's, it had a lot to do with the first issue and, and, and all that. Very good. Very good. Okay. Well, uh, unless there's anything else that you can think of that you'd like to share with people, a little insight into things, uh, we'll be happy to, uh, you know, wrap things up. Anything that you can think of that you'd like to? Well, let's talk about the graphic artist thing. Cause oh, I yes. feel bad okay. now that you, you... Done that for us and well, no. <laughs> saved us well, $225. Um, yeah, well, that's, so that's true. But I learned... didn't, I didn't make it you know, explicitly Clearly. known that I would do that. And uh, I think part of it is because I was right in the middle of a huge project and I really wanted to, I love the design, you know, that you chose, you know, the, um, uh, the water meter. Uh, I was like, wow, that's really cool. So in the backside is based on um, a, a symbol that's on the receiving vault. Um, there's a, a tomb called receiving vault in Oddfellows Rest Cemetery. And I wanted it to look identical to it so you can hold your coin up to it and, and say, oh, look, that's it. Hmm. But um, the lodge voted, and Robert's Rules of Order and all that, that there was an alternative design that um, we came up with that's a little bit more flashy. Hmm. So we went with that one after all. Uh, but it still is based on this eye with the eye beams coming out of it. And we added a sickle and an hourglass. And um, so basically... Um, what I didn't know at the time was you don't have to be perfect with your design. Um, and I'm, I'm going to send you, and you can put it up now, um, the black and white designs that we sent to, um, uh, that our graphic artists sent to um, All About Challenge Coins. And then their people uh, tweak it as well. Now, most of the coin companies will work with you and they allow you so many back and forths before they tell you it's too much, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I forget how many All About Challenge Coins has, but because we use somebody who has some graphic knowledge and yourself probably can cut that down. Um, like I said, they have to tweak it to make it work for the coin. But um, in the end, I think it helped out that we didn't need them to go back and forth with all that mm -hmm. but knowing what i know now when you when your li listeners watchers see how basic the black and white design is uh it doesn't have to be super detailed um you can go with the basic design in a concept and 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 get away with not spending um, money on a graphic artist mm -hmm. but we are completely happy with megan nolan's work and i would use her again but then again, knowing what I know now, I didn't realize we didn't have to be perfect. I thought we had to submit something perfect or it's going to come back blurry or junk or something like that. 
Yeah, um, I I went through the same sort of thing when I uh, uh, had some custom fezes made. Oh, okay. Uh, so I you know went through and you know made a really great design. And uh, one of the things about embroidery, you know, uh, that I didn't know was that no matter what I did, they mm -hmm. had to put it through some software, which would then do a computer um, uh, embroidery. And so that means that they had to change uh, the, the, the thickness of certain lines. And, and exactly. It, it, so, the, the, the stamp machine has to do that. So yes. you don't have to worry. It's the same exact thing. You don't have to worry about having the lines perfect because in the end, they have to do what they have to do. Right. But they send you a digital proof and um, mm -hmm. you can put that up as well. Um, okay. Here we go. Remember send you all this in a timely manner. But um, you can, you know, you can say, well, when they send you the digital proof, you can say, well, I don't really care for how thick that line is or that. Mm -hmm. And they can probably either come back and say, well, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you go too thin on, on a, a stamped metal, it, it won't come out right or, or not come out. Uh, dur you want durability, obviously, right. with a coin. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm trying to think. Uh, that's about it. All I could say, the other thing, too, is for lodges considering this, try to think about what year your lodge is in. Banner years work out good. Your fifth year, your 20th year, 100th year. That would be mm -hmm. awesome. 125. Uh, sure. um, all these, you know, kind of banner years. It, not that you can't have one for your 37th year. Obviously, you can. But usually, um, it's better when you have some kind of banner type year. And then from there, um, if you're doing two different finishes, um, you can come up with different ways of, let's say your lodge is uh, number, you know, 157, you may not want to do 157 gold coins. But if your lodge has been around for 50 years, um, you can say, well, for, we're going to have a gold coin for every one of those 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just different things you can play with there. Sure. Now, um, also, if you're working with another organization, I mean, you are doing this as part of Oddfellows Rest as well. Um, it may be the 200th year of Oddfellows Rest, you know, coming up yes. soon. We don't know, right? So that could 1849, be 1849, and I got to do the math, but... Um, another 20-some years. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I will say this too. Um, I totally underestimated the popularity of the sequential coins mm. and the gold finish. Um, they were very popular and the silver selling out pretty fast. Uh, not, not as fast, but they are mm -hmm. selling pretty good too. But um, people were lining up to buy these, these gold coins. Um, uh, and I, I will say this, if you, do, if you, any of these lodges, any of you do offer to it, don't, promise a a number to anybody um it's really hard especially anything under 30 because people want their birth date i did pretty good i think to accommodate our members we had 16 charter members and i reserved the first 16 coins for them mm -hmm. first but then like one girl could have um one of our new members we still need to initiate her birthday is on the seventh um uh, we were going to give her number 17 well she chose to buy number 27 mm it's her choice. You mm -hmm. know, she could have had a lower coin if she wanted to. Um, but that's something to think about. I can tell you the sequential coins, they cost a little more to add it to it, but they're very popular. Well, there's another thing too with this. And, and that is uh, uh, in our lodge, and I won't reveal what it is that we give our new members, uh, okay. but we actually have something that is a, com a commemorative of nature that has to do with our lodge that we give to new members. And it's something that's available to purchase from members of the lodge okay. as well. So that way, um, you know, if, if one of our lodge members who were not initiated into our lodge wants one, they can have one or they can give it as a gift if they really want. Uh, but for people who are new to the lodge, it's a gift from the lodge to them. So I could see doing that with a coin if you actually, you know, purchase the sufficient number of them. And we are offering any odd fellow who purchases at least a silver coin uh, can apply for free to associate membership um, uh, with our lodge. Uh, and that's just a perk we're offering. Um, you don't have to do that, but we're offering that. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, do you think that there's anything else that you would like to share with anybody who would be watching this? Uh, I'm trying to think, not really. I just, um, I, I do suggest if you're having a banner, banner year coming up, mm -hmm. consider doing a coin. 
you know, part of not just Odd Fellows, but other um, uh, organizations, secret societies, for lack of a better term, so we don't like that term, um, <laughs> but, um, you know, um, is producing metals, pins, lapel pins, ribbons, coins. Collectibles. This is something that, that goes hand in hand. If you go on eBay, you can see this goes on. Um, while Odd Fellows have been out of New Orleans for over 40 years, the last time a lodge in New Orleans produced some kind of metal ribbon coin or something like that is probably more like 60 years to 75 years hmm. um, because the lodge slowly went downhill mm -hmm. and, um, and it ended in uh, 1979, I believe, is what year Michael discovered. Hmm. Now, it sounds to me, like based on what you were saying, that there had been uh, plenty of lodges that existed in your area before they eventually all folded. There was. There was a lodge, a Germania Lodge. There was a, a, the Tetonia Lodge, a Southwestern. I think maybe Tetonia turned into Southwestern. Uh, Michael uh, Duplantier um, is the Oddfellows Rest caretaker, and he's now our noble grand. He has a lot of that written down. Hmm. Um, but it just slowly died and we're, we're trying to bring it back and um, we're doing our part. Well, it sounds like you're doing a great job. I'm trying, I'm happy to see your success and I'm glad to know that you're getting new members in and, and that you're doing these kinds of things because I think that they really uh, not only benefit you, but they also benefit odd fellows at large. It generated a lot of excitement. The, the, mm -hmm. the lodge members were very excited. The night I brought, the coins to the meeting it was chaos you know mm -hmm. um people were throwing money at me and you know I, you know and i used a spreadsheet by the way for the the 73 numbered coins and that's how I, I stayed on top of it because if you don't use some kind of spreadsheet and you do promise somebody a number or something mm -hmm. um you really you don't want to promise somebody something that you don't have anymore you sure. know use Absolutely. a spreadsheet <laughs> good tip <laughs> all right well yes. eddie uh, thank you again uh, so much for taking the time to uh, be on a, on a on this podcast with me. Yes. And um, uh, I, I just would like to give you an opportunity to just say something in closing, and uh, I'll wrap things up here. Oh, I think we covered it. Um, I thank you for having me on your podcast. And um, I'm willing to, if I didn't cover something, if anybody wants to contact me, I have no, you know, please, um, it's okay, uh, Joseph, for you to give out my email or uh, even my phone number if it's a lodge member that you uh, vouch for. Um, right. I, I have no problem. Um, like I said, I'm willing to help anybody uh, get this done because I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I just did research online and I learned as I went. And the graphic artists had done that we use had done coins before, mm -hmm. so that also helped out. Sure. But um, you know, I think if I had somebody that knew more what they were doing, maybe um, I would have done things differently. But um, you know, I'm still happy with how everything turned out. Well, good. I'm glad it was a good learning experience, and now we get to share what you learned. Uh, with everybody here. Uh, so thank you, Eddie, for being on again. You're and welcome. I just want to remind everybody that if you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and also please share it with others. And uh, we'll catch all of you next time on the next Odd Fellows Oddcast. Have a great day.